So, Chuck, I got another explainer for you. Okay. Can you can you handle it? I'm down. I'm you're down. I'm, I'm, I'm glad down you, you're, you're such a good trooper. I'm so I'm so. Well, no, these are great. These are always fun. So uh-huh. you know, I'm. When, listen, when I start to become disappointed, then you know maybe then I'll be a trooper. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Very good point. Yeah. But you're only good trooper if really you're you are faking it. <laughs> right. Yeah. I mean, if it's if something's enjoyable, you know, it's like when when people say uh, when you're at a party. And people say, oh, we're just so happy that you, that you were able to make it. And we're so happy that you're here. And I'm just like, why do you guys normally give shitty... I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, no, I'm like, what? why do you guys normally give crappy parties? Like, <laughs> you know, like people want to go to parties, you know? Right, it's right, like, right, right, right. Yeah. Okay, so here it is. A topic, things to do with wormholes. Uh-oh. <laughs> Watch out. I just thought, you know. I don't know, I, man. I don't know if we should be doing this. People are not imaginative enough. From That's what my I've point. Seen why are we wormholes. going? Why are we giving people? Let me explain. No, scientific um, sci-fi writers right now are watching this here. Yes. And going, bro, get a pen. <laughs> yes. Neil Do deGrasse it. Tyson is about to hook us up <laughs> Do with it. some killer ideas. Do on it. what to do with wormholes. Do it. My point is, we should be getting paid for this. <laughs> we, this is valuable. All right, so here it goes. Uh, so let me remind people what a wormhole is. Yes. All right, so we have the sort of the fabric of the space-time continuum. Mm-hmm. All right, so it's not just that space is out there. Space is int- intricately configured with time. And... How do you know this? Because we, uh, we did this exercise before. I think we yes. did space time in, a, in, in, we another, did this in another show. We did an explainer yeah. on that, where I ask you, uh, I say, Chuck, let's have lunch. Um, let's have lunch tomorrow. Okay. Right. Let's have lunch tomorrow at twelve noon. Okay, and, and then of course I will say, Are you buying? <laughs> 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 Okay, no, that's that's no, not what course, I thought. To, I would, of course, okay. the, of course. It's, well, where, where you want to have lunch? Well, yeah, yeah, you know. yeah. So the question is where. All right. So I set up a time, and you knew that was incomplete. Right. And we have to complete the the engagement by establishing a location. Right. So I gave you a time tomorrow, twelve noon, and you're going to say where. All right. And I might say you pick whatever, but we need a where. Otherwise, it doesn't work. Mm-hmm. All right. I could be in a place at a different time. Or at the same time at a different place, but we have to be in the same place and the same time in order to meet. Okay? Right. And uh, on, on the same token, I can say, oh, I'll meet you at Gabriel's for lunch. Okay? And then you say, what time? All right? Uh, so, space time are forever conjoined for this fact. Okay? Mm-hmm. And other reasons, but this is that's the that's the terrestrial one that is closest to how we think about the world. All right, this fabric can be distorted in such a way that you can change the distance, the space time distance between two locations. Okay. All right, and one way to imagine that is imagine all of our universe is just on a flat sheet of paper, mm-hmm. and you're on one edge of the paper and I want to get to the other edge and I'll take how light years of time, whatever, however long that takes. Okay. Right. I mean, it's light years distance. So I take many years traveling at the speed of light. But if I take the space and warp it, curve it back on itself. Mm-hmm. Now your location is very close to me. If I could somehow punch through the fabric of space and time and reach your location. That's the warp drive right there. Yeah, well, well, so the warp drive would accomplish that by other means, right. but it is nonetheless warping the fabric it's of space. Warping this fabric of space. Making right. something that would otherwise be longer a shorter distance and thereby transcending the speed of light to do so. You're no longer limited by the speed of light. The diameter of our galaxy is 100,000 light years. You can't travel across it unless you figure it, during the TV commercial, unless you figure out a way to warp space and time. Okay, so in that warp, in principle, on paper, you can have a hole that you pass through and just come out the other side. And you're in another place. And if you did it right, you can show up at another time. But let's just make your timeline continuous with yourself. So you go right through, 
and you come out the other side, bada bing, there you are. That's the most classical invocation of a wormhole. Mm -hmm. Okay. And by the way, in spite of what Hollywood shows, that when you go through wormholes, it's like you go through the, the water slide at the water park. No, that's not how, it's just, you just step through. Right. And you're there. Right? right. This is accurately captured in in Doctor Strange, all right, where he opens a, p- a portal. I don't, does he? Do they call them wormholes? In, no, in they DC don't. Con- they call them portals. <laughs> yeah, just a portal, and that's a wormhole. And but in Rick and Morty, they do exactly the same thing, and he know they're wormholes. They, they know this, okay. And the difference, of course, is that in Rick and Morty, they're using real science to make their wormholes. Whereas Doctor Strange is using magic. Magic. Yeah. 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 And you gotta you gotta, you know, do your fingers in a way and right, go exactly. in a circle. Right. And, and, and the little sp- sparklies on the edge of it too. Yeah. Right, right. Right. And there's it's, definitely uh, weird looking ideograms that they yeah, somehow <laughs> okay. somehow have power and uh. Okay, so so things to do with wormholes. Mm-hmm. Right? Yes, you can move through space and time, just as has been portrayed in the film. But let's get a little more practical. Okay, so uh, the movie Monsters, Inc. was all about wormholes. Did you see Monsters, Inc.? You have kids. You saw Monsters, Inc.? I did. Several times I've seen that. Okay, the doors. Yeah, I see what you're saying. They're manufacturing doors that the monsters take home, and then they open the door. That is the door of the closet of the kid they have to scare that night. That's right. Okay, and there's a big chase scene where they're going in and out of doors in the factory, and they show up in Paris, and they show up in, in you know, in 20 different places with every door they pass through. Those are wormholes. So instead of a transporter, which molecularly decomposes- I'm getting there. You were exactly oh. right. You yeah. Chuck, that's my next thing. So my point is, if you just walk through a door, you walk through a door. Right. Okay, that's the wormhole. And while they never said it in Monsters, Inc., which is a Pixar, Disney, Pixar animated feature, but very cleverly done, and, it's, and they're funny. Um, they didn't say it, but those are wormholes, period. Period, right. okay? Right. Without the, the histrionics of a, of a Doctor Strange and without the madness of Rick and Morty, they are wormholes, okay? Well, if you have wormholes and you can warp space in that way, then the transporter in Star Trek, which dematerializes you, beams your energy at the speed of light to a location, and then you get rematerialized, right. would be completely unnecessary. Doesn't know, exactly. You yeah. just pop the hatch, walk through, and now you're in the other spaceship. Now why you're on the you, planetary surface. Why'd you have to take me apart? <laughs> exactly. You completely <laughs> took me apart, bro. Completely. Yeah. Okay. Plus, uh, there was some episode I was told maybe in the later series, because I'm less complete in the later series, that there's some fraction of your molecules that are not transported Reconstituted, accurately. yeah. Yeah, there's well, like an well, er- that's, copying errors. Yeah, that's well, that's why they have the uh, buffer. It's called the transporter buffer system. Because of that, it compensates for that, which is why sometimes, which is so lazy, but it, I love it. it, it works. It's like somebody gets lost, and they're just like, well, what we'll do is we'll use the transporter buffer to take all of their molecular imprint, and then we'll just make them the, make bring the person back. Oh, uh, okay, okay. Yeah. So they don't they don't really die in a pile of goo, right? right? Okay, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So so what's interesting there is we're in the age of information, which was not so in the 1960s, right. and so they didn't, weren't thinking about information in the same way or at all. And so all you really need to do is make an exact copy of all the information that is contained within you, all the neurosynaptic configurations and everything, and then beam the information to another ship and then recreate you there. And then what that means is I can create you in any location and I can create multiple yous. That's right. right? And I mean, why not? They do that with the with the replicator. All right? That's right. That's uh, all the replicator does. That's it, all it does. It, yeah. So in principle, if you have a replicator, you don't need a transporter system. Okay, we just have the information of who you are and transport that. But so that's one thing you would do with a wormhole. Okay. So we have monster scaring children. That's first application. That's <laughs> Second. I love it. Because <laughs> otherwise, how they, otherwise, how are they going to get in your in, in the kids' room? There's no way they can get in. Exactly. Another thing is imagine if the back of your refrigerator were connected to your grocer. Oh, wow. 
And he'd stock it the same way he stocks the shelves at the grocery at, store. At the, at the grocery store. They'd take a peek. Oh, you're low on lettuce. And if the lettuce is turning bad, they'll take out the lettuce, put in a fresh one. And there is no transportation network involved. Mm, say goodbye, Grubhub. The, 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 in, yeah, so Grubhub is, is, a, is a practical wormhole, right? By the way, you know what else a wormhole is? Another is an elevator. Ooh, Think yes. about it. You walk into a room, the door closes, and then when the door reopens, you're in a completely yeah. different time and place. That's actually kind of, you know, you know, yes. That Think about that. Yeah. Just, if, if you, if before electricity and before elevators and before tall buildings, just grab someone off the street and take them into a modern elevator. <laughs> okay. Oh, my God. Yeah, and then the would. doors, you know, they, they're on street level or something. And then they push a button and then they open it up and then they're 100 stories up and they'll freak out. How did that happen? The room didn't change. I didn't see anything. There were no windows. What happened? So uh, for me, an elevator is a modern sort of next best thing to a wormhole that you can come up with. Yeah. As, right? As, you could be in one room and then take an elevator and then it's a kitchen and another room and, and then it's a, like a living room or whatever. Yeah. You know? And, and so just the world changes just in a matter of seconds. So... Uh, so what do we have? So we have the elevator is a poor man's <laughs> wormhole. Yeah. We've got s scaring children in their closet. We've got the transporter in Star Trek. We've got the back of your refrigerator. And what that ends up doing is completely removing the transportation sector from the world. I was going to say, what you really do, I'm home for the rest of my life. <laughs> I don't have to do anything. <laughs> By the well, way, if, yeah. you don't have to go somewhere to obtain something. Yeah, everything can come right through the hole. Right through the hole. Correct, correct. Uh, and I got one other, I think I've told this many times, but I, I even laugh every time I retell it, even though it happened to me and it's my, my joke, right? So is, is that good or bad, Chuck? Are you allowed to laugh at your own? I listen. I, I say whatever works for for the person for, telling the for joke. Whoever. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. So so here I was in the Charlotte airport. I was, and I had to go from a big plane to a little plane, and the carry on that I had did not have wheels, so I actually actually had to carry it, and I, Chuck, it felt like I walked three miles. It might have just been a mile, but to go from a big plane to a little plane in that airport. I must have walked the full width of the entire airport campus. Right. And I finally get to my destination with the little bitty ass plane. And I said, I got to tweet this. So I tweeted, can't wait until there's, can't wait for wormholes. That way all airport gates would be adjacent to each other. <laughs> you just, you just step through and you're there. Right. Okay. And then, cause I thought that was a nice geeky thing to, you know, Tweeting to my geek base, I got out geeked. Okay, I got out geeked. Here it is. Uh, one of the responses was, "Dr. Tyson, the day we have wormholes, you won't need airports." <laughs> I said, "Oh, that is true. Oh, yes. Oh, oh. Yeah, but, well, you, now you just put every pilot out of work." I know. Well, this is a readjustment to the economy yeah. that's happened many times before. Nobody's making horse-drawn carriages anymore or buggy whips or, you know, there's whole industries that don't well, exist. I, I, I don't, they're still making the buggy whips. They're just not for buggies anymore. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Chuck. <laughs> they're just called whips. Okay, yes. fine. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Fine. Um, so, so basically the entire transportation sector would go out of business basically overnight. And it's a wow. fascinating reality. And, but and plus, you wouldn't need twelve lane highways to go anywhere. Right. You go. Yeah. You want to go to grandma's house for Thanksgiving? Yeah. Just wormhole in. So, so each home would have like a general purpose wormhole right. that you dial the coordinates and come through. But your right. grocer, they'd only have access to your refrigerator, right? Right. And and, and your in laws would have access to your friend's house. <laughs> do, do not come in here, man. That, I'm gonna tell you something. I don't like the world with just wormholes. That's a little too. No, close. you could lock them. We'll figure out a way to lock them. It'd be You're like your front door. Okay. You yeah. you hear a knock. You know. The, no, but you can never get away from anybody. Think about it. No matter where you are, you lock them out of your wormhole. Yeah, but then there's then they call you on your worm phone. <laughs> <and they're> <laughs> <laughs> 
be like, I'm right here. Yeah. I'm, I'm right here. Hey, man, what's going on, man? Where are you? I just went to your house. You're not home. <laughs> right? No, I'm in, I'm in Bermuda. Okay, I'll meet you there. Uh, exactly. Oh, yeah, you're Bermuda. That's great. I'll be there you know, in a couple seconds. No, man, this is not cool. You know? uh, okay, I didn't think of the downsides of this plan. Yeah, right. Okay. Somebody's got to, like, think it through a little further than I have. But... Uh, just think, or, or maybe the wormholes are where the previous uh, ports were. Right. You had, you, you know, uh, train stations, airports, spaceports. You right. have a wormhole port. And so you can't just go anywhere at any time. You got to sort of sign up and. Yeah, that's a little better. Yeah, the other way's a little invasive. You can't even pretend invasive. like back in the day when, like, you know, the, you know, people would knock on your door and be like, oh, you know, you. Okay, we're not answering that. Yeah, in the day, you you couldn't tell them in advance that you were showing up. Right. right. So you had to be ready to greet someone That's at right. the door. That's right. In fact, the very word caller was someone who knocked on your front door. And that word was adopted into telephones. And so now we think of caller as only with phones. Right. But, the, you know, the gentleman caller for, on the lady. You I know. do believe you have a gentleman <laughs> caller at the door. <laughs> My good Delilah, <laughs> you did not tell us. <laughs> I chuck this all the time we have for wormholes. Oh. Yeah. You know, if we had wormholes, we'd probably have a little more time to do this segment. Because <laughs> <laughs> whatever we got to do next, we can do it through the wormhole. <laughs> through, the wor through the wormhole. That's right. So, Chuck, we got we to gotta call it quits there. All right. All right. Uh, yet another explainer brought to you by StarTalk. Neil deGrasse Tyson here, your personal astrophysicist. Keep looking up.